yes, I believe in God. I believe that God is in everything. And in regards to my religion, if anyone asks, I would say I am a perennialist. I believe there are many different ways to find God. I believe there are many different legitimate paths to God. So those are the um, the short answers right there. Now a disclaimer before I begin to elaborate. I'm not a priest. I'm not of the priest archetype or priest caste. I am merely a humble aspiring enlightened despot. I'm merely a humble philosopher prince. So there are those who are much better suited to talk about these issues but uh, since I get the question quite often and since I know it's a, um, a topic of um, of interest to many I thought to give my take on it but I have been hesitant to respond to this because I ultimately believe that your own religion should be something personal and I don't want anyone to to wait for my answer to start their own quest to find God. Now, I'm not trying to be humble here. I uh, want you to listen to me always. I always want you to do as I advise, as I recommend. So if I say that you should train hard, read hard and sleep well, you should definitely do it. So every, basically every video I um, make, you should listen and you should take to heart the advice that uh, that I present. Same thing with Dauntless. I wanted to read it, I wanted to incorporate the practical advice. Um, but when it comes to religion, I can't say to you which path you can take. It's up to you. Dalai Lama says that Buddhism is the best way for him to find God. For me, I'm still searching, I'm on the path and I want to explore as many different religious traditions as possible, hence I call myself a perennialist. And now you might say, oh, can't you say that you are a pagan or a Christian or something like that? And I can't say that because that wouldn't be the most accurate response possible. I always want to be as clear and honest as possible. So I'm giving you the honest response right here when I say that I am than a perennialist and I acknowledge that there are many good and glorious ways to uh, find God. What I can say however is that if someone asks are there many gods or are there only one god, again take this with a pinch of salt, again I'm not a priest, in my humble opinion at least. And of course I derive inspiration from the Neoplatonic teaching of the one or the good. So I believe that there is one God that is in everything and that God is beyond comprehension for humans. I am certainly comfortable saying that God is beyond my comprehension. Um, but if we're talking about several gods, I have a good example which I used in my latest podcast. So we can take the sacred Baltic Sea which I suppose many of you know and love. I certainly know and love it. It is connected to the Atlantic. So one could say it's the same water in the Baltic and the Atlantic, but they are still distinct bodies of water. Um, there are still two different seas, if you will, but at the same time they are one. And if we're talking about one god or many gods, I would say that the many gods are part of the one god. And another good example, which I also used in my latest podcast, is the different forms God can take. And I can take a rather mundane example here. Um, I can take milk and whey. Now whey is of course milk, but in a different form. So they come from the same source. The one, the one source of milk, of dairy. Uh, so when you mix a protein shake, so milk and whey, you mix two ingredients which come from the same source and then they become one again. Something else is of course 
snow, ice, rain, water, same thing, different forms. So that's something I find, at least in my humble opinion, quite useful to think in terms of the, the nature of the divine. It can take many different forms. And if you read my book review of the agony and the ecstasy, I included a quote which illustrates quite well the when uh, when Hindus are being called idol worshippers and they say that Krishna or God he can take many different forms, so he is in the materials of the idols as well. Um, you can check it out. I will link it below that article. Uh, quite insightful, uh, the book itself. Now moving on to demigods, angels and uh, the primordial beast even as well. When I say the primordial beast, I have tried to explain this concept before in a video. I feel more comfortable explaining it now, but it's simply a, a certain energy of God taking a certain form and that particular energy, it imbues you as a man, hopefully, with a sense of primordial energy. I can't explain it better than to just refer to it as the primordial beast. Now we can say that the primordial beast is a, uh, well, a god, but it's actually a, an energy of the one god. Uh, same thing if we're talking about gods of war. Certain men, sometimes, I suppose many of you have felt it at some stage, you feel uh, an urge to fight or whatever. Yeah, that can be the... Um, warrior energy of God in the form of a war god such as Tyr or Mars or Ares or or Ares or someone like that. He takes that form and imbues you with that energy. And then you have different other gods that can imbue you in a similar manner. So you can view it as God taking a certain shape and then he blesses you in that shape and uh, you feel different uh, different ways. Now if you want to live a lifestyle which enables the primordial beast to imbue your spirit then um, yeah simply simply live the lifestyle which I recommend. So train hard, eat clean, sleep well, absolutely no pornography, think in heroic terms act in heroic terms and uh, yeah you will build your your inner body your your inner temple you will um, be able to attract the spirit of the primordial beast and it's an absolutely great sensation when uh, you feel that when you start feeling like a um, force of nature now of course many people they talk about the love of god this is something similar but that love it takes something it's a different sort of energy, but that's definitely something I recommend you to try to find because it is a nice feeling. I'm not saying that I have found the, the perfect love of God yet myself, but um, it's something worth exper it's something worth going on a spiritual quest for at least. Now the discussion on demigods and angels, it will have to wait till the, I suppose the next podcast episode or a separate video, I'll see. But long story short, in my view at least, a demigod would be someone who is a, a human that is additionally filled with the energy of God. So the, the energy, if God is in everything, a demigod is a person that has extra much of God in him or if it's a demigoddess in uh, her. Now lastly, as I also mentioned in the latest podcast episode in regard to the, um, well, so-called conflict between Christians and pagans, always online of course, a very escapist, a very silly uh, conflict. I don't even want to call it a conflict, but uh, yeah, something of that sort. Now, this is not something you will take any heat for. You will not take any heat for going all out criticizing paganism or criticizing Christianity. Uh, you will take heat when you talk about bioculture and civilization and stuff like that. So if you ask what team am I on, because I know in these online dramas, online conflicts, it's not so much about 
pushing a good message, it's about scoring goals against the other team, like it's some sort of sports ball game. Uh, as I said, very silly, very inglorious, but anyway, what you will take heat for is promoting your own bioculture, if you're white, that is. Now the team I am on is team Mother Europe. It's the same team that I've always been on, and that is what you also take heat for. So if you're still engaged in this uh, yeah, so-called conflict, it's not something I want any part of. So anyway, I hope that responded to the question at hand. And in terms of culture, you know, if I wear a Hammer of Thor, it's primarily a symbol of bioculture. Uh, then also, of course, if uh, Thor, the thunder god, is a part of the greater god, it's a certain energy, quite similar to the primordial beast, I might add, but uh, that would be a topic for another video or podcast or article. Um, then, of course, if I wear a cross, um, the Swedish flag has a cross on it, it's not something I have anything against, so I don't mind, even though I'm not a... Um, a Christian, I don't have anything against wearing a cross or, you know, proudly hoisting the Swedish colors which uh, contain a cross. It's um, still our symbol and uh, a beautiful symbol at that. Now, I have rambled on for long enough. Again, disclaimer, I'm not of the priest archetype, so there are those who are better at explaining these matters. But uh, that was my take at least. I hope you enjoyed the video. And thank you for watching. XXO. Boom.